The following contest is a singles dream match and is set for one fall. One fall. Introducing first. He is your new IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion. This is the Aerial Assassin, Will Osprey! Ladies and gentlemen, it is no over-exaggeration to say that the world has been waiting for this clash between two of the very finest wrestlers of their generation. Yes, they have met before, but not when both men carry such prestigious international gold. This is going to be nothing less than historic, a match that is truly 25 years in the making. And one half of the puzzle is in the ring right now. The aerial assassin, Will Ospreay. Will Ospreay is the newly crowned IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion as of quite literally two weeks ago. But the Bruiserweight Pete Dunne has been the WWE UK Champion since May of last year. Can you believe those two belts are so close to touching? It is truly an incredible sight. And if you don't know why, we will tell you momentarily. But this is a stare down that has been eagerly awaited by the four corners of the world. And it is exclusively happening. A unit nine in Milton Keynes, this is IPW. And ladies and gentlemen, watching around the world, you are about to see a showcase from two of the very finest wrestlers, not just in the world today, but of their generation. Tom Scarborough handing the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship and the WWE UK Championship over to Chris Hatch. Don't drop them, Chris. I bet they're worth a lot of money. Tom Scarborough is making sure both men are ready to begin this historic encounter. And the bell has gone. And an international match for the ages, in the sense that they are international titles, is taking place. It is taking place right here, right now in the heart of England. And two of the proud warriors of this generation are going to go toe to toe. The reason this contest is so historic, I'll, I'll quickly go through the details of that now. This is the first time for 25 years that a champion of New Japan 
and the champion of the WWE are facing off at the same time. Reigning and defending champions of New Japan and WWE. The last time a match of this magnitude happened, Hulk Hogan was the WWF champion, ladies and gentlemen. That's how long ago it truly, truly was. We are talking history books. We are talking when Hulk Hogan took on the great Muta back on May 3rd, 1993 in Fukuoka, Japan. The combination of these championships has not been seen in the same match this century and it has never ever taken place in Europe or indeed America. It could not be more exclusive. We're talking about champions. Nice move there from Osprey. We're talking about champions. Our next show is our return to Milton Keynes for IPW Parade of Champions on February 21st. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook to keep up to date with the matches as they are announced. But we can confirm that IPW World Champion Austin Aries and the NWA World Champion Nick Aldis will be here. We're sold out right now at Magnificent Seven and you can expect the same for Parade of Champions. Fly to www.ipwk.bigcartel.com to get your ticket before it's too late. Look at the bruise right. Oh! What must that feel like inside the rib cage of the Aerial Assassin? Making sure his fingers aren't broken. Probably a good idea when you're in there with the bruiser weight. He'll break your fingers, no problem. <laughs> the last time we saw the Earl Assassin will break in IPW, it was back at Super Show 5. Super Show 5, it seems so long ago now, when he was defeated by the American Nightmare Cody. Pete Dunn, of course, far, far more recently lost to lost to Jimmy Havoc by DQ back at IPW1 which was in Milton Keynes right in this very building back in October and that was only because a homicidal, suicidal, genocidal, death defying man Sabu got involved and cracked Jimmy Havoc over the head with a chair oh are you kidding me Pete Dunne taking a page straight out of the classic playbook of Will Ospreay. He could do a handspring and he could do a pose. I'm not sure if that's going to serve the interest of Pete Dunne to fire up the earlier assassin. We have seen what he can do around the world. We saw what he did very recently in New Japan. We saw the way he vaulted from way up above en route to becoming IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion. But we've also seen what Pete Dunne can do at the very top of this business. We have seen what he has made and we have seen the resiliency and the brutality that follows in the wake and the very shadow of the bruiser weight. Oh, he's trying to break the fingers once more. No! Oh! Ladies and gentlemen, that is an audible clap. An audible clap between the fingers and a click. Well, from a chicken wing to a forearm smash, Pete Dunne, he doesn't do fun and games very often. Will Ospreay should be mindful of that. Do not take him lightly because he will forearm you into next month. Rake in the back. And now he's trying to rip off the nose.
rip off the nose, break the knees, snap a few fingers. Will Ospreay may be trying to fly about the ring, because that is what he does best, of course. Oh. Wow. Don't antagonise Pete Dunne, he'll take out anyone in this crowd. And have them for seconds after he tries to polish off Will Ospreay. Dunn's got Osprey wrapped up almost, I'd say almost in a chicken wing. Not quite though. And there's a handspring kick. Imitation is the most sincere form of flattery, but nothing is quite as good as the original. I think Pete Dunn found that out the hard way when Will Osprey roundhouse kicked him right in the side of his head. Assassin trying to fire himself up here to take on the threat of Pete Dunne. Two feet right into the mush of the WWE UK champion. Absolute precision from the air of Assassin. Only a two count on that exchange. It's interesting, Will Ospreay actually debuted on April Fool's Day in 2012. Well, just tried six years ago. But anyone who thought that he would just be a joke had the idea quickly quashed as the aerial assassin. And that's what he's about. That's why we call him Ariel. He has quickly blazed a trail to be regarded as the greatest high flyer of his generation. Not like he was going to try and go for the rain and maker. Didn't get a chance. Bruceway go for the cross landing, but Osprey lands on his feet and returns the favour with a splash. Corkscrew sent on. Are you kidding me? Middle of the ring, but couldn't quite get the job done on that exchange. Well, Osprey has risen to be one of the greatest of his generation. Pete Dunn started training at the age of 12. He used to travel over an hour every single time he wanted to train. He knows what the struggle is like. He knows what it's like growing up in England, having to fight for the training, having to fight for the position. Both of these men became the very best because they were trained right here in England. Going to go for the crash landing, and he got in and he's transferred. Trying to transfer to an armbar, but instead, 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 when Osprey fights himself. Into that lock to make sure Pete Dunne can't quite extend the arm. Oh, snapping. Snapping the arm back there is going to affect a lot of, a lot of the movement. Like a bomb. Like a bomb by Dunn. No, he didn't get him on that exchange either. He did have a very firm grip. A very firm grip indeed around Will Ospreay. But Will Ospreay still able to kick his legs just enough. Just enough to get out of that situation. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live here in Milton Keynes. This is Unit 9. This is IPW. This is a contest 25 years in the making between two of the finest of our time. Two champions internationally. WWE, New Japan, here on IPW. Thank you so much for joining us wherever you are in the world, whether it is in the streets of Japan, or whether it's somewhere in New York, LA, or in London. Thank you so much for joining us around the world. A reversal of the century goes for the Oscutter, but it's met by the forearm of Dunn. He got him. He got it with the rain and maker that time, and Pete Dunn has been wiped out. Couldn't connect with the Oscutter, but he did connect with the rain and maker at the second time of trying. 
and the crowd are witnessing what can only be realistically described as a dream contest for any fan of wrestling. If you like high flyers, if you like strikers, if you like grapplers, if you like submission experts, if you like almost any variation of wrestling, you are seeing it on display in these two quite, quite remarkable athletes. And right now, right now it is the strikes of Will Ospreay that you're seeing on display. He can strike, maybe not as well as Pete Dunne arguably, but believe you me, a forearm for Will Ospreay still feels like you've been hit by a frying pan. The Bruce has got his hands behind his back, he's daring Osprey to knock him out. And it takes just one from the Bruiserweight to send the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion crashing to the canvas. What a kick by Osprey! What a kick! He's got him set up! Osprey might be thinking again some Piri Piri! because it's the Cheeky Nando's kick to the WWE UK Champion. The crowd have gone from Bruce away to Osprey. That is the magnitude of both individuals. They are not cheering just the man. They are cheering the heart, the passion and the pure athleticism on display. El Assassin oh, double tucks and flips over twice, are you kidding me? And what did Pete Dunne? Pete Dunne's got spray. Cheeky Nando's kick from the bruiser away. He's going for the bitter end. Go for the bitter end, he got him. He got the bitter end. Oscar, Oscar. Bitter end from Pete Dunne. Osprey retaliated with the Oscar and both men have dropped their big bombs. And I mean their big bombs. Tom Scarborough is taking the count. There is little movement from either man. Pete Dunn has even tried imitating Will Osprey to get a victory in this one. He then hit him with his own finishing move. He hit him with the bitter end. But the Oscar sends both men to the canvas. Scarborough is up to six and there is little movement for either of them. Both men trying to get up. Up to nine, I'm not sure they're gonna make it. No, they didn't make it. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised both men hit their biggest shots. Ladies and gentlemen, with both men unable to beat the 10 count, this contest is declared a draw. And to be quite honest with you, that I think was the fair result in the end for both competitors. They both showcased the very best, not just of British wrestling, but of their respective companies, the very best of New Japan and the very best of WWE. And of course, I hate to add, the very best of IPW. Thank you so much for watching this wherever you are in the world. Thank you. Thank you from all of us here at IPW. Osprey's having a little word with Pete Dunne. Both men can answer the tank count. Both men hit each other's finishes. The crowd are trying to get them to fight. They've just had a war. They've just had an all-time classic with each other. Five more minutes. If you didn't hear me, Pete. This match has been 25 years in the making and we're only 24. So guess what? I'm asking you straight up. Let's not end it like this. I say fuck oh! off. Oh, Pete Dunn. A Pete Dunn pedigree for Osprey. And the bruise away. Will Osprey was saying five more minutes and the bruise away just kicked him where the sun most certainly does not shine.
Wait a minute. Went for Raider Maker. He takes another horse cutter. And Pete Dunn is out of here. What an epic contest. And what a most fiery kick of a conclusion. Thank you so much for joining us here at IPW. And for the match, there was 25 years in the making.